Hello and welcome to the Barrett channel. If you haven't been here before, I'm Lee. I run this channel together with my son Ollie. We're a father and son duo. What type of content do we make? We make opinion pieces, we make food and travel, and we make technology videos. We do factory tours, so there's something here for everybody. Now, as you know, I'm a massive fan of Huawei. And a lot of people think Huawei are just a company who, who copies other people. And that's not true. So today I'm gonna to share with you some facts and figures that just show you how much technological development Huawei actually do. So first of all, let's start with their financial commitment to R&D. Even in the early days, Huawei invested around 10% of its revenue back into R&D. And in the last three years, Huawei has invested more than 15 billion US dollars per year, over 15% of total revenue. Between 2010 and 2019, more than 90 billion US dollars have been invested. At the end of 2020, Huawei had more than 100,000 R&D employees. That's more than 50% of its total workforce. And included in that figure are 700 mathematicians, 800 physicists and 120 chemists. In 2020, Huawei ranked third on the 2020 EU Industrial Research and Development Investment Scoreboard. Huawei filed its first patent in China in 1995 and since then has filed many patents all around the world including Europe and the USA. Here's a graphical representation of patents that it's filed from 1995 to 2006. And this graph shows a number of worldwide patent applications compared with their industry peers. And since 2004, the number of patents Huawei has been granted is also similar to its industry peers. This continued investment in technology and innovation has made Huawei one of the world's largest patent holders, with over 100,000 active patents held and they continue to be among the world's top companies by number of patent applications. Currently, Huawei has 3,007 declared 5G patent families, the highest of any company in the world, and it's estimated that around 18% of those are SEPs, Standard Essential Patents. Those are patents needed to make 5G handsets communicate with 5G networks. Now you have an idea of how many people are involved and how much money Huawei spend on R&D. Let's have a look at some of their technological milestones over the last 20 years. In 1994, Huawei applied for its first trademark. In 1995, Huawei filed its first patent application in China. That year, Huawei filed six patent applications in China for different technical fields. In 1997, Huawei launched its wireless GSM solutions. In 1998, Huawei was granted its first patent in China. In 1999, Huawei submitted its first patent application in the United States, its first patent application outside of China which helps support the market expansion of its products worldwide. In the year 2000, Huawei was granted its first US patent. In 2001, Huawei signed a patent license agreement with Qualcomm. Since then, Huawei has conducted extensive cross-licensing negotiations with IP holders in the ICT industry and has entered into more than 100 patent license agreements with major global ICT companies across Europe, the United States, Japan and South Korea. In 2002, Huawei signed its first patent licensing agreement with Ericsson in the wireless field. In 2003, Cisco and Huawei had an IP dispute. The following year, the two parties settled the dispute and filed a joint request to a United States court to terminate the lawsuit. In 2003, Huawei and 3Com established a joint venture. 
Huawei provided technology and R&D employees and 3Com invested 165 million US dollars. In 2006, Huawei sold its shares in the joint venture to 3Com for 882 million US dollars. In 2004, Huawei launched the NE5000E core router that supports cluster networking based on a forward-looking architecture. This product has since set the gold standard for architecture in the industry and is still a star product today. In 2008, Huawei filed 1,737 patent applications under the Patent Cooperation Treaty, ranking first in the world for the first time. In 2009, Huawei was named as one of the world's 500 most influential brands by World Brand Lab. In 2010, Huawei filed a lawsuit against ZTE in Europe for patent and trademark infringement. In 2015, the European Court of Justice made a ruling that helped establish legal requirements for the licensing negotiations of standard essential patents. In 2011, Huawei established the 2012 Laboratories, a cradle for innovation where Huawei researchers explore platform technologies and other technologies of the future. In 2011, Huawei filed a lawsuit against Motorola in the United States after being involved in an IT dispute with the company. As part of the resolution of that lawsuit, Motorola paid Huawei a fee and obtained permission to transfer Huawei's confidential information to Nokia Siemens Networks as part of an existing mergers and acquisitions deal. In 2015, Huawei signed a patent license agreement with Apple to whom it licensed wireless standard essential patents. In 2016, Huawei and Samsung filed multiple patent infringement lawsuits against each other in China and the United States. In 2019, Samsung reached a settlement with Huawei and paid Huawei licensing fees. In 2016, Huawei launched the P9 smartphone, the first phone with a Leica dual lens camera allowing users to capture pictures in both colour and black and white. This product set a new standard for smartphone photography. In 2020, Huawei filed a patent infringement lawsuit against Verizon in the US, demanding compensation for patent infringement. So as you can see from that brief timeline history, Huawei are indeed an innovator and have cooperated with many companies around the world. And one of Huawei's main products in the telecommunication industry are routers. And Huawei over the years have come up with a number of industry firsts. In 1999, they were the first company to include high-speed switching fabric into their routers. In 2006, they were the first company to introduce a back-to-back -back cluster solution and in 2019 they were the first company to introduce 1.6 terabits per second core cluster routers. Now I'd like to tell you a brief story about how Huawei pioneered 5G. This began back in 2009 when Huawei first started researching 5G and after two years of study and research the conclusion was reached that massive multi-antenna technology would be the new standard for future mobile networks. Despite industry concerns over the viability of this technology, Huawei decided to move forward with research that ultimately resulted in multiple patented core technologies. At the time, there were two major barriers to this technology. First, it was only conceptual, there was no workable solution. Two, the algorithms used to simultaneously manage so many antennas was exceptionally complicated. However, in September 2014, Huawei's 128T massive MIMO base station passed internal testing. When experts from the China Mobile Research Institute were invited to come and see it, they were amazed to find that it performed three times better than existing products, yet weighed only 49 kilograms. Each unit had 128 radio frequency channels, 
two of which were only the size of a credit card. The technology had passed muster and Huawei soon became recognized as a genuine front runner in massive MIMO technology. Now fast forward to July 2018 and Huawei's 64T and 32T dual 200 MIMO products for 5G networks were first made available for commercial use, raising the bar for new networks in the 5G era. In 2015, Huawei introduced the Top Invention Awards program to recognize employees who'd made innovative discoveries. Some of the developments and technologies to come out of this program, high-speed decoding of polar codes, optical cross-connect, Da Vinci 3D cube computing engine, super uplink for 5G, Huawei one hop for easy file transfer, the Falcon wing hinge for foldable screens, converge storage systems, the computing and communication architecture for vehicles. As you can see from that short presentation, Huawei are committed to R&D and committing the budgets to R&D. And in my opinion, they will continue to do that and they will bring the benefits to businesses and consumers all around the globe. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel in general, consider hitting that subscribe button or maybe even becoming a member. We'll have more technology for you in the future. But as always, for now, take care.